brake light switch repair for an American iron horse done by Curtis from Wild Steed Works here in San Diego, California. Um, my man Bob Swartz brought his American iron horse uh, to my shop, Wild Steed Works. He was having an issue with his brake lights being on constantly. Um, so we've gone through the wiring under the seat, troubleshot it, and found that we did have it, in fact, have a constant uh, brake, rear brake light. So the first thing we did is we walked through, disconnected the uh, rear foot control uh, brake switch to verify that. And what we found was when we disconnected the rear brake switch, uh, the lights, in fact, did go off. So what I then did was I took a voltmeter, set it on continuity, and we checked the switch. Our brake switches on these bikes are a normally open switch. When you apply pressure to the brake pedal, that closes the switch, which then completes the circuit, causes the rear brake lights to activate. Um, so what we're doing now is we're going to replace the rear brake light switch uh, as it's bad. So what I've done here is I've disconnected the uh, Deutsch connector that American Iron Horse uses on their bikes. Normally you'll find a smaller blade type connection like this one that'll be further down in the wiring harness um, and you may have to uh, slice a small piece of shrink tube in order to access these, access these to disconnect them. In some cases it may just be a continuous harness and you might have to simply cut this and install the new blade connectors and then install the shrink tube in order to put it all back together. But at this point we're going to remove uh, the brake switch, the rear brake switch here, and we're going to install the new one. Uh, they have this Deutsch connector exposed here where it could possibly get damaged and it doesn't look real attractive so since we have extra cable on this we're going to go ahead and uh, install the uh, original Deutsch connector on the end of this so that we can move this whole connector back up underneath the frame zip tie it up out of the way so it all looks really clean. In addition instead of having the wires been around like this with shrink tubing we're going to install this real nice uh, Goodridge uh, right angle boot and that will direct the wiring the way it's supposed to be and keep it all protected after the installation. I gotta go get a plug because if I, when I take this out I'm gonna move this up so it won't drain on us and then I'm going to put a plug in here to keep the master cylinder from draining out on us. Uh, you think maybe the switch is good and there was too much pressure going on there somehow? Uh, it shouldn't be because the brake system doesn't work like that, but that, that peed out of there awfully heavy. You think we'll have to bleed the system after this, or yeah, we definitely it? will. Okay. We're gonna lose. Uh, I think you got a little washer may have fallen on. Yeah, that's. We're gonna put a new one on. We get to that point. Now these bikes, they don't use the regular brake fluid, whatever the dot. No, normally older bikes and cars, older cars will use dot three. These bikes use dot five. Just a higher temperature before it boils, is that the difference? Uh, that, it's silicone based. Oh, okay. Um, there's a few different things. They are, the silicone um, dot five will also won't, uh, swell seals, things like that. Whereas dot three will make rubber seals swell. Oh, so we have our new uh, brake switch. Um, always replace the old crush washers, uh, copper crush washers, with the new ones. If you try to reuse the old ones, there's a high probability that they're going to leak on you. So we put one on the inside. Get it back 
in here on the outside. And there's our new switch. Now, do you have to bleed the brake if the fluid level didn't drop below? Sometimes you can get away without doing it. Um, all you got to do is just pump the brakes. See right now they're real. Real, yeah. They may or may not pump up. If they don't pump up, it's a pretty simple process. It's not going to pump up, so um, we'll go through. I'll show you the uh, brake bleeder that I have that actually pushes fluid from the brake caliper end. Since since we lost our fluid at this end, we want to push fluid from the brake caliper end because we're going to have a little bit of air at this end versus trying to pump it from this end and push all the air back out through the system. So and as soon as we get the wiring done, then I'll demonstrate the brake the brake bleeder unit that we have. Sounds good. So we're just going to crimp those ends on there and uh -huh. zip tie it to a line back there so it's out of the way. Is that yep. it? Make it nice and clean. This isn't the best way to have to do this, but. My 2006 Texas Chopper has working brake lights again. Thanks to Curtis from Wild Steed Works, not only for the repair, but also for allowing us to make this video. If you're into custom motorcycles, be sure to get a free subscription to our popular motorcycle blog. Check the text below. Thanks.